Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. Hello, I'm back with another episode. Uh, I was thinking of doing this particular episode dedicated to the electric guitar. The astute person might notice that there's been a couple of changes. One, I've got a pop filter on my microphone, but I'm still not using that microphone. I'm still using this one. I got the standard filter here. And I also have a card from a birthday that uh, my niece had given me. Thank you very much, Victoria. Super cool. I really like the drawing. I also have a QR code over there too. Maybe later for advertising. I don't know. As an option, your ad might go there. Think about it. Send me a text or a message or something. What's the story behind me playing electric guitar? Well, uh, after doing lessons on classical guitar and learning how to sing and play at the same time, and then picking up an acoustic guitar with my dad, I had a friend who got a Samick guitar, and that thing was a piece of junk, but he loved it. And I had a bass by that time, so we were able to jam. And that was fun. That was very experimental. Um, I remember not having an amplifier, I had to use my dad's stereo system, and I managed to I had enough adapters from a Radio Shack to be able to make a system to make it work. And we jammed. It was fun. But I couldn't afford a guitar. So after a friend of mine had his second hand, he wanted to upgrade, he um, allowed me to purchase his Ibanez. So I, my first electric guitar was an Ibanez, and the neck was not that easy to play. Um, tuning was the same, uh, single coil pickups I could plug in, but it was not friendly. My dad had access to a PV amplifier, and so I was able to plug that in, uh, either for my bass or um, a simple electric that I picked up. Uh, being able to pretty much play a lot of stuff on radio on an acoustic, I um, was hearing that there's a lot of electric, electric guitar going on as well. I heard that there was a lot of stuff that I couldn't necessarily play on acoustic guitar, like uh, electric guitar leads, Guns N' Roses, for example, Slash, uh, or a lot of metal with distortion. And uh, it was cool, and I wanted to try it. And the PV uh, had enough settings so you can get the harshness and the overdrive and the crunch and um, the saturation. But the difficulty is when you want to play music like that, you have to crank it. So much of the Western uh, electric guitar scene, whether it's British or American or Canadian uh, or Australian, um, is that you really have to like, crank it. And that is really hard to do in a family of five uh, where your brother is singing and playing classical piano and the dad wants to make, make his mixes uh, from uh, opera records and symphony records. Just not enough space inside a suburban home with a family of five. Um, music was quite alive, but the kind of music and the possibilities therein was complicated with family dynamics. I had another friend of mine, Andy, who got himself a Marshall stack and a cabinet and he started to do things like Metallica and metal, um, Anthrax, Megadeth, you know, Iron Maiden, the things that he loved, he had passion for. But that was commitment. Uh, having to have that sort of equipment to take around, um, having a license and a vehicle, um, that was out of my price range. Another friend of mine, Jeff Prock, had an electric guitar. Uh, he had a Fender Strat. And Fender is a very, very popular name, along with Gibson. Uh, but uh, I look really good with a Fender. The old Ibanez was a second hand from a buddy of mine. Uh, it was black and silver. And I got one of those uh, black leather straps with all the tassels that come down it. Uh, I loved it. It was so good. And then my buddy Andy said, hey, you, you know, like playing guitars. Um, how about you try my Fender just for a week and see if you notice the difference. And oh my God, was there ever a difference? It was like night and day. And I think it has to do with the neck. 
I could rap. Like, this is just so easy. It feels nice. And it just, it felt really nice. <laughs> Now I've got my Traveler, and that's got a different feel. The bass has got a different feel. Acoustic has got a different feel. The classical that I started off with had a different feel. So the easier something is to play, the better. So what do people do these days? Well, it's 2021, not 1993. Cool Runnings, man! Not 1993. So I have a Roland amp. It's a practice cube, micro cube. And this thing has got amp simulations in here. And I've got uh, some options. None of them which I really know what they mean because they've got like brand names, but I, I don't know what the brand name sound and tone is. My tone was developed very, very late. Uh, with an acoustic guitar, you play acoustic guitar. With uh, classical, you play classical. With bass, not very much tone variation, not nearly as much as say an electric guitar or an amplifier and a cone. Sure, you got a little bit in the fingers that you can, you know, um, glissando or vibrato or, um, you know, play forte or piano or whatnot. But, you know, the, the regular dynamics, but the speakers, that that's huge. Uh, even the pedal train that you use for electric guitar, chorus and delays and reverbs, if you so choose to use it. Uh, distortion, overdrive, etc. That that colors the tone completely. I didn't have any of that. And a lot of the music that's produced in studios that I was growing up with, that I want to experiment with, demanded that you had all that. So, eh, money. Now you just download on a computer and do it through an amp sim. So thankfully I never actually had to buy any large amplifiers. In fact, that PV was given to me. I had another amplifier which was given to me and then computers came along where you can just plug in and play through them and through a computer you can just put on headphones and get a really decent sound so uh, if that's how recording is done now then I kind of just missed that whole massive stack stage thanks and my back is really really appreciative of that so here's a classic example of what I'm trying to mean about tone my favorite album back then was Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, and I wanted to sound like David Gilmour. Uh, favorite song was Comfortably Numb from The Wall. But how am I going to get that sound? As everyone should know, David Gilmour's guitar has got uh, passion and drive, uh, it's got echo and reverb, but it doesn't have like the metal sound, so you can't get a metal pedal, you can't just crank it and overdrive. There's a lot of subtlety that goes into it. Um, I mean, I can only do so much, but you want to sound like the album, and you just can't. Uh, so, you eventually have to develop and purchase the uh, things that you need. And all your guitar heroes, um, your, the people who you aspire to sound like, have got their technique and their, their tricks, but they also have their sound, which was mastered in a studio with equipment that you just don't have and can't afford. It takes a lot of uh, tinkering and honing and as you're doing that you're defining your own musicianship so you eventually develop your own style with what you got so instead of playing all this electric guitar like all the every guy wanted to do uh, I did have the bass I was able to complement that and I also had a lot of microphones next to my dad and I'm able to sing so that's what I focused on and so that's what also season two is going to be all about, vocals. Season two is going to be all about vocals. All about vocals. All about vocals. Ah, uh, there's karaoke tonight. Mm. But of course, I wanted to play electric guitar because I did want to sound like my sound heroes. And I did have a bit of scratch with some work. And back in the day, what was the music? A lot of Guns N' Roses. A lot of Guns N' Roses. A lot of wah pedal sound. And then Nirvana, so a lot of chorus. And a lot of classic rock too. So Led Zeppelin, 
a lot of Jimi Hendrix, and uh, yeah, a lot of wah pedal. I moved to Athabasca <clears throat> three years ago now, and I had my traveler, but I really wanted to play an acoustic, sorry, an electric guitar. Uh, so I bought one second hand through the Athabasca Buy and Sell on Facebook. And I, I want to remember the name. Uh, Shay Piazerowski? Piazerowski, I think? I think it's Shay. And uh, Nicole Schwier. Thank you very much for going into Edmonton, the town, and uh, picking up a chord. It, it matches really nice. And the strap. So cool. So cool. Very Alberta colors. But this is a Typhoon. It's a Fender knockoff. Made in China, I think. Ooh, I could change the strap too on this baby. Oh my god, I'm changing the strap length. I would never change the strap length. Look at me, I'm changing the strap length. I'm changing the strap length. Oh, standing and playing versus sitting and playing. That was an early decision. I like to stand and play. Look at all the dust on this thing. I think I think this is like guitar number 14 for me. Tuning. strings that you want to put on, uh, the materials, um, the um, sizes, some people like it thick, some people like it thin, and with electric guitars the strings are typically a lot thinner and they break and it's a real pain in the butt. Um, so you can buy packs, you can buy singles, oh. and I just always have some on hand. And change them! This one guy had like nasty black he actually sliced his finger open because he never cleaned his strings. It's just disgusting. Ugh. But some stickiness is actually kind of good, depending on what you're trying to do. A little bit of grip. This thing's got a humbucker on it. Uh, instead of a single coil, it's a double coil. You have more of a crunch. One of the first things that you kind of learn is uh, patterns. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix is really good for that. So good for finger exercises. So once you have your electric guitar and you have everything that you need to be able to produce noise, uh, it's really whatever you want to do with it. Uh, country, um, blues, uh, heavy metal, um, and there's different kinds of subgenres and all of that too. Uh, rock and roll, punk. Uh, I never got into punk. It, it was too harsh. Uh, it just never connected with me at all, on any level. Pop punk. No. So much no. A particular flavor that I really enjoyed was Santana because he played electric guitar to a whole samba rhythm ensemble and it's like, oh my god, that is just sabor, spicy. And instead of all the blues riffing, he did in like major. And you mess around with tones and sounds and see if you can sound similar to your idols. Uh, whatever turns you crank. Whatever genre that happens to be. Um, for me, it happens to be a lot of psychedelic space rock. So, yeah. Whatever floats your boat. Um, this is the Typhoon that I've been playing. I do have my Fender Strat here. American made that I got down in Florida. It's, it's beautiful. I really enjoy playing. And I do most of my stuff in Dad get I've gone on and on and on and on and on and on with uh, playing electric guitar, so I think I'll just can it, can it there. 
Uh, tuning is important, but uh, maybe I'll do a separate thing on my Fender Strat later. <laughs> playing the root as the first note like this would be a C if you throw on the G in there you get a oof. now the guitar playing musicians out there with ear will note that this already sounds like crap because <laughs> I haven't tweaked the settings and I'm not gonna to put all that effort in uh, the easiest way to tweak the settings is to adjust where the sound comes from out of the pickups, which pickups you choose, or combinations of pickups. Uh, this is a bit warmer. And this, I learned, was tinier. And in the middle is a sweet spot. the tone control knobs and the volume control um, you can adjust that and play around with it too um, if you have the time and the patience and the you know the you know, practice and all the fancy stuff that you would like to do but you can't because you're busy doing other things like vocals or bass or sound engineering and putting everything together <laughs> Thank you. 
something that I should point out is um, uh, getting into the theory behind how everything is structured on electric guitar. I have also been doing a lot of notations. Because it's one thing to hear and just pick it off and figure out how it's done. Because I've got relative pitch and I can pick up things pretty darn fast. You know, hear things two, three times and you're like, oh, it goes like this. Uh, but if you need to figure it out, then I suggest, you know, getting something that uh, helps you out. Because we've got the capacity to write and figure stuff out and figure out patterns and then apply those patterns and modify those patterns and uh, apply those modified patterns and come up with some really cool stuff. And that's the intellectual component of it, figuring stuff out. Uh, you could also have it just as an emotional release. Um, being a teenager, you have a lot of uh, Strom and Drang, so electric guitar is a fantastic way to release that. Uh, passion driven, whether it is sad and doleful, or uh, wistful, um, or if it's uh, passion as in a driving force of anger, uh, if you're driven with aggression, it's also damn sexy. And there's that whole social component as well, uh, a give and take. Um, and that could be a huge motivating force. That passion and showmanship can work out in a love aspect, for example, and that can reap some amazing amazing rewards. So I'm going to continue making more of these videos. Uh, I'm getting some positive feedback. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I have a more list of uh, things I want to do, such as interviewing people. And if you've enjoyed me doing this, I'm going to continue doing more.